No sooner do I get the engine working perfectly on this pressure washer, as shown in the last video where the carburetor was rebuilt, the oil was changed, the service was done, that the pump stops working and pressure is minimal, if not existent. And now it's a new project of uh, rebuilding the pump or seeing what's wrong with it and correcting this action for this pressure washer. Let's get started. Tell you right off the bat, I started loosening and removing the brass fittings from the pump while the pump is still in the unit. And the reason is in making these videos, sometimes the best vice you have to work with is the device mounted in the unit itself. I mean, these things are not exactly coming out easy. I removed these three. You could see uh, the pieces that I'm gonna be pulling out shortly. And I, I did open very slightly the uh, brass plug up top there to see that some oil came out. Let's me know this thing wasn't running dry. Quick inspections of these show some of them to be in better condition than others, right? But nothing absolutely horrible, right? Let's see, I don't see any horror shows here. There's a drain one on the lower one. And I'm just gonna keep moving along with this uh, disassembly. This is supposed to move. This is supposed to be a spring-loaded item. I'm gonna have to uh, have a further inspection. It breaks down even further with this spring, a little piece in here. We're going to flush it and then I'm gonna oil it. We see that everything is moving just fine inside. I'm gonna put some lithium back into here and reassemble. And with that, I will remove the pump from the unit. Uh, the same bolts that hold in the pump also hold in the engine. So great care must be taken as the engine could fall off. So long as you're on a flat surface, three bolts will drop that pump right out the bottom. There it is, just falls right down onto the table. And I slide it out from under. At this point, I could very carefully uh, take this uh, pressure washer and get it off the bench. Uh, keeping in mind, however, you know what I might actually do? I'm gonna take a couple bolts and run it through here just so the engine doesn't fall off the platform. There we go, I put two of those bolts back in. That's a lot safer than having it completely decoupled. I'm gonna put this off to the side now. Here we go, this, this is the pump. Uh, the th three screws that held it in, uh, seal up top. We could see uh, a key on the shaft, so it holds it in place. There's the engine spins, the pump spins with it, so forth and so on. Obviously, there is a um, engineering in here to maintain specific pressure. There are three hex screws on the bottom that hold the pump together. I'm going to be uh, removing these now. There's a six mil. I put up a little fight, but a lot less of a fight than I had expected. I can already feel that this is not going to be an issue to separate. This is just going to be straight up, lifting straight up to remove it. So we have here this mechanical piston side of the pump from the engine. And what we have here is the actual components that make up the pump itself, right? So the point of failure is probably going to be directed towards this. I have no reason to believe that this failed. I'm going to clean the section up. I'm going to spin it, I'll take a look, see what's what. But uh, the degradation is most likely not here. Make this nice and clean, uh, check the oil, fill the oil properly, and move on. Getting these things out are no fun. I'm going to show you how I do them without breaking them. I use transformer wire like this. I just pulled some. It's a just flexible copper cable. It cut me two lengths just like that. I make a slight hook on the wire and fish it under one of those legs and pull it out the other side so I have it hooked on just like that. Then I slowly feed it and pull it through with a pair of needle nose pliers until both lens are equidistant. It should look just like that. I'm gonna repeat this process again on the opposite side right over here. What I'm left with looks like this. Then I'll take the ends and put two or three twists into those ends. I'll grab it with the pliers and yank it straight up. In this case, everything came straight up, spring and all. We could see that the white plunger is still sitting there on the bottom to be safely removed. Three down, three to go. These present more of a challenge because it's a deeper well, but it's the exact same process. Twist on the end and a yank with the pliers. That's all it takes. The piece should be sitting down there very nice. So these are definitely not meant to be used as serviceable parts at all, but with a little ingenuity, you could get them out without any damage. This chuck valve was stuck here. I had to take an extension here. I took an extension and I, I lightly tapped with my rubber mallet uh, about 20 or 30 times till it started to come loose. But eventually it did break free and now I'm gonna spray it out. I'll show you now it does have a springy effect. 
You can see it does deflect now, and that's good. At this point, this whole thing's just ready to be blasted out with water. With all the stuff I've done, uh, clean this out and start working on the other parts. Also, I recalled before it failed that water was actually coming out of the uh, soap filler. This uh, piece that is on here, it sits right there. And this gets uh, siphoned in just before it comes out of the pressure side. So I removed it and I'm just going to clean the, the check ball and the seat for the check ball and put that back in as part of this cleaning regimen. You can see like a, a thick coating of calc on there that I'm just going to take off with some polish. There we go, it's all polished up and that should stop the leak. I'm going to take care of the seat with polish and a Q-tip. We can see inside there, I've polished it up just fine. There's a jet way down in here that I want to blast through with air. So what I've done is I'm putting the whole thing in a fabric bag and I'm going to hit it with my air compressor. This bearing and spring fell straight out of the unit. That's pretty awesome. I'll be able to polish this bearing now too as well and put it back in. This is the one from the bottom here. It just fell right out. These three plastic pieces that don't seem clean to you. Take a look at the movie, what they looked like before. I've cleaned these uh, three rubber seals. I did not use carb cleaner for this. Uh, these are the most important seals of the project. They are going to see the... Um, 327 all around on the top on the inside and on the bottom as well before they are packed back into this unit clean the face of this make sure that there's no calc on it if there is i'll clean it off with some polish we could see the other side of the check valve down there on the edge on the circumference you could take a small jeweler screwdriver and pry it up there's a rubber seal under there show you what it looks like. This is what the piece looks like. It's got the rubber seal, so it's going to be a little bit of work to get it up. But if you could pry under this lip and lift it up sideways a bit, they will come out. See a little quick prying work, released it, no problem at all. Applies for these three down here. Let's start with a, there's a 50 caliber bore brush that I've got in my drill. This makes quick work of any deposits that are down there. Brush also works really nice on the uh, connector for the hose for the pressure washer gets all that calc out of there too it's like brand new so inside all these ports are now cleaned up there's there's no more crud in there and just as a test i'm going to take a check valve i'm going to spray a little rem oil in here that check valve already has some of the 327 on it and i'm going to install it just to see how easy it goes in there's a completed check valve assembly i'm just going to place right oh look at that it just it's it fell right to the bottom. No force necessary. I'm just going to push it into place. And that that's it. You just saw it snap into place. When this thing is cleaned out, that is all it takes to install a check valve. Let me see if I can repeat that one more time. Cleaned up and re-lubricated the O-ring, right? I'm not going to drop it right down there. I'm going to take the... Um, installed finished. I'm going to put this one-way valve back in for the uh, soap dispenser. That includes the valve, the ball, and the spring. I'm going to drop the ball down in there like that, and then the spring goes on top of it. I'll keep everything level and screw it back into here. I snug it down, and that is completed. Work some lithium grease in here. I'm going to use some good aero grease. I'm going to get it down into that bottom there and work some in, and then the spring. Put a little on both uh, wobble plates and a little on the spring because that's how I found it and then I'm going to reassemble this unit. There we go, everything is ready for assembly. Got the first plate in facing up like this. I drop in the spring, drop on the second plate, then screw everything back together. I screw it until it's fully seated. I felt no need to have to uh, remove or adjust the set screw, right? So it's sitting exactly where it was. Now I'm going to put some 327 on these O-rings. This is now ready to go right back in the pump assembly. Good as new. I'm pretty much screwing the stuff in by hand and then just tightening it with a wrench. I mean, all the threads are nice and clean. Nothing is binding at all. It's like working with brand new equipment. Next is going to be this check valve right here. It's going to drop the spring right down. Make sure it's seated nicely. I'll get a pair of pliers there. Make sure it's standing straight up. And we can see the spring is perfectly seated all the way down. Then I will drop the bearing, which I've already polished. And that just falls right down there perfectly. I'll just test it for a second. I shouldn't expect it to bind. No, everything is just absolutely fine. Like brand new. Put some 327 on this nut that I've already uh, cleaned up. And I'm just going to close this up now. 
by hand. Now I'll just tighten it. And I know for completeness I'll be yelled at if I didn't take this little drain screw out the bottom and clean the threads and put it back in. So I'm just going to do that right quick. So what we need now are check valve seals, put it back together and we're finished. With all the check valves back in now, I'm going to put the uh, three caps back on, clean them up one last time. Each of the rubber O-rings gets the 327 on it. Now we're going to add in the seals. And the seals have this open bottom. The open bottom faces down. And I'm just going to place it in right here. Should go in rather easily. There we go, just like that. I've already applied 327 to these seals. There we go, that wasn't hard at all. And now following the seals are the plastic discs. They just sit just like that. See, the pump is not equilateral, so it only seats in one direction, right? And that is going to match here uh, because these white pieces could fall right out. Obviously, I'm going to keep this laying down, and I'm going to lower the pump over it like that. And try and do this with one hand. It's not that hard. And situate, situate this over like this, and seat everything down like that. It's done. I'm going to drop the three screws through on the other side as I hold this together. I've got it sitting up right now. I'm just turning in a screw all the way just so it doesn't fall apart. I'm just hand tightening them. It's aluminum, so I snugged each bolt progressively one at a time, making it tighter and tighter until uh, they were nice and snug, but I didn't try and break anything. I didn't go crazy. This is just a, a water pump. If it leaks, I could always tighten it, but there's no need to snap anything. And now it is already brand new for assembly back into the unit. One more thing for those wondering if I was actually going to do this, uh, because I'm here and it's been 10 years, I'm going to drain the oil and put in some new pump oil. I'm going to mark this line, drain it into my oil tank, and then I'm going to refill it with fresh oil, put it back into the unit. I got to tell you, this oil smells like old teletype unit. It's, it's really cool. It smells like, like old teletypes. Look at that. That was ready. Snug this down and we're done. I'm going to have to remove these two bolts that I ran through to secure the engine into this chassis. The pump has rotated with the work, so it's important to line that key up with the detent on the shaft of the engine. We can see that's pointed outward towards me, so the pump is going to have to be uh, turned by hand. So I'm going to put a towel in there and rotate it a bit. I've got it now at a decent approximation. Once I slide it up and it's fully seated, I'll run the first screw up to hold everything into place so it doesn't just fall back down. All three bolts are in. I'm just going to tighten them down now. Last order of business, we're going to give it a, a light pull with the pull start, make sure nothing's binding, that's all. Seems okay. Hook up our cables. We'll give it a shot. Thanks for watching. If you want to avoid something like this in the future, be sure to disconnect that hose when you're done using it. The one to the high pressure side and lean the unit forward. Let that pump drain out before you store it.